the story I've been covering for a few days here now on Talk Radio, and that is the disappearance of Sarah Everard. This happened seconds from my house. So I really feel a personal affinity to this story. I was one of those people that checked my, you know, dash cam and CCTV footage on my house to see whether I could see that aqua coloured Mac. I actually sat there for ages, sort of scrolling through it, trying to see. And that's because, you know, love or loathe South West London and Brixton and Clapham. I think there is a real community feeling there. And lots of people were really shocked and horrified. I know that I am. I know that people I know are. This could have been one of my friends walking home late at night. This could have been anyone close to me walking home late at night. So I'm extremely conscious of that. And I think that's why I've been covering this story. In fact, I started covering this story well before anyone else did, when the Harry and Meghan um, Markle debacle was taking place, because I felt it got a little bit lost in that story. And obviously... It hasn't ended particularly well. And the debate has moved on, probably quite rightly, to talk about the kind of violence that women have to endure and the kind of decision-making women have to endure in order to feel safe on their way home. But also the comments of Baroness Jenny Jones and about curfews, not only curfews for women, which is what was suggested, but also curfews for men. And that's got us talking about what is the correct response from men to this, but also why should men have a response to this? Are we all being a bit hypocritical by expecting a response from men? Well, let's now talk to Mandy Reid. She's uh, the leader of the Women's Equality Party. She's a London mayoral candidate and joins me live via video link. Evening to you, Mandy. Good evening, Christo. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us tonight here on Talk Radio. What do you think is the correct response, if any, from normal law-abiding men like me to this sort of horrific story? I think um, everybody should be appalled by what's happened. And I think that um, the very minimum is absolutely to call it out absolutely to renounce it, absolutely to denounce it, absolutely to intervene if you're in a position to do so and you see um, a woman being threatened or um, harassed or made to feel vulnerable in any way. I, I, I'm not at all confused. I, I think that that is a really straightforward, common sense, common decency way of dealing with um, this horrendous scourge of male violence against women and girls that is just part and parcel of being a woman or a girl in London or anywhere else in the UK in the 21st century. Now, obviously, and I get it, if you see something like that happening, if it is happening in front of you, calling it out is the right thing to do. You are not going to get an argument with that from me. I also right. think that it is really reassuring, and if nothing else, kind, actually, for men to condemn what's happening and reassuring women that there are decent men out there, that there are men out there. In fact, I've seen so many men, so many black cabbies on my Twitter feed who are who are furious, furious that another man should have allegedly at the moment, because we don't know whether it's this particular man, it could be another man for all we know at this point, has done this. But, and I feel like a hypocrite because the issue I have... I don't know if you heard my what I was saying just before the break, is that that we don't expect other tribes, minorities, people who are representative of a ethnicity, a gender, a religion, to have to condemn the actions of those people within that tribe, for want of a better word, for their negative behaviour. It's great when they do, but when we hear that it's expected, we're told that it's it's not appropriate. We, we When we say, well, why aren't more Muslims calling out Islamic terror attacks? We rightly say, well, actually, no, it's nothing to do with law-abiding Muslims. Why should they have to call this out? We called out Donald Trump. We rightfully said it's completely wrong. Donald Trump blames the whole of China for COVID because, of course, normal law-abiding Chinese people had absolutely nothing to do with it. 
So isn't there something of a double standard happening here? I think um, I think that's a false equivalence. And let me explain why I say that. Okay. Um, you, you remember yesterday one of the other news stories um, that coincidentally came out on the same day as developments with, with the case that we were discussing was that a UN UK uh, UN Women UK report um, revealed that 97% of young women aged 18 to 24 have experienced harassment. So pretty much everybody, pretty much it's universal. And so in a way, and, and, and the uh, perpetrators of that harassment are always men. And so in a way, what we're actually needing um, to write that wrong or contribute to writing that wrong is solidarity. It's solidarity from um, men who have more power in society than women do, more status in um, society than women do. And we need and we want them to use that power and use that status to address this sort of horrendous experience that is just baked in but, to um, women and girls' lives day in, day out. But respectfully, hmm. someone from the Islamic community could say precisely the same thing about what they suffer on a daily basis as a result of some of the people in their community who might carry out a horrific crime in their name, they could say, well, they don't have the power in society. They could say that it's not other Muslims that they're getting that Islamophobia from. And it would be reasonable then for them to say, well, actually, uh, and when, when we say, sorry, we expect you to call out those people that, 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 that act negatively in Islam, we, we say that that's unacceptable. So why? I don't think it's a false equivalence because the very reasons is. you've just given for why women don't have power, people of the Islamic faith or people who are from other minorities could say, well, look, we don't have the power either, but we are not expected to call out those people who act negatively in our community. No, but it is about power because the reason this form of harassment is so prevalent, is so common, is because of the inequality that exists between men and women. Men have power, um, more power relative to women. And so that creates a situation where, you know, men can and they do abuse that power. If you're talking, if you're talking about the example you give about um, Muslims and terror or whatever it may be, it just doesn't work here because the power dynamic doesn't play out. Now, what I'm saying is men wield more power in society and they could use that power in service of supporting solidarity and respect for women. And I think that but, but, would be something that made a profound difference. But Muslims would say that, that, that identified. Muslims would say that non-Muslims wield the power in society. Muslims would say, well, hang on, it's exactly the same arguments that you're giving. Look, I don't disagree no, with you when you're saying that, that men hold the power. I don't disagree yeah. with you. What I'm what I'm questioning is yeah. what the rules are when it comes to this. Because fine, if the rules are that people from a community have to call out the negativity from that community, great, I'm good with those rules. No, I'm what good. I'm saying is, what I'm saying is abuse of power should be called out wherever it is found, okay? And men can use their position, their status, and their power to call out other men who abuse their power. That is what I'm saying. And I think that would make a really big difference. And there's another angle to it as well, just sort of common decency. Why, Christo, why mm -hmm. did you um, troll through your CCTV or whatever it is? Why did you do all that? What was your motivation? Because what made you do it was that? The, I felt it was the right thing to do. I wanted yeah. to help. I wanted to help. Exactly. And I want to live in a society where people want to help and where people want to stick up for those who are at the sharp end of inequality, people who are um, suffering, people who are victims of violence. And I think that in a way, when there is a gender dimension to something, which this obviously has a gender dimension to it, you know, every three days, a woman is killed by a man in this country. It doesn't go the other way around. It shows you that there's a power dynamic. Um, in London alone, last year, 8,000 reported rapes took place. Um, and that is a crime that men commit against women. And I think, I think if we want to live in a healthy society, men could and they should, and I encourage them and I, 
I wish I could demand it of them, but of course I can't do that. That's what I want to see happen. Because I, I, see I, I don't have power to help and support women. I honestly don't disagree with you. I'm, I'm not trying to actually I know. argue yeah, I with know. you. But I, I, but I feel like We're a hypocrite. But I, but I feel like a hypocrite. You because, mustn't feel like a because hypocrite. Because I, 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 I call out people that yeah. say, you know, the exact example I've given you or the exact example about Kung Flu and the Chinese and, and all of that sort of thing. I call people out that do that. And I say, actually, no, you, you can't. You can't generalize by a very small minority in a group of people that might be negative. And in the same way, it, you know, not all men are bad. There's a very small minority of men that are bad. Now, mm. proportionately, women suffer as a result of that. That is abhorrent and it's wrong. But I'm a hypocrite because on the same in the same way I expect men to call it out, I don't expect it of other communities. And I just want to know what the rules are, I guess. That that's it. But again, I mean, I can't. I don't. It's, have it's kind. To it, 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 it's. It, I guess it's just kind. You know what? I don't expect Muslims to call out terror when it happens, for instance. But I think it's kind and it's helpful <laughs> and it's wonderful when they do. I think I've got a problem with it being expected. I think that's no, I think, where the problem I think, is. I think I've got a problem with the premise that's built into the two examples you've given. Um, Chinese people being deemed responsible for spreading coronavirus. I'm sorry, racism is inherently built in to anybody who makes that kind of assumption. But that's um, power. They, that's exactly what the point you're making. Racism is built on one group having more power than the other. And your premise about men and their attitudes to women is built on one group having more power than the other. So is it really such a false equivalence? It's a completely false equivalent because if you're saying men should, um, and by the way, I'm enjoying this conversation. Yes, so am I. I am as well. Even though we're not really getting anywhere, um, um, I just I just wanted to throw that in the mix. Um, if you're tr if it is it is racist tropes that underpin the idea that Chinese people are all carriers of coronavirus and responsible for spreading it around the globe. It is racist tropes that stereotype um you know uh muslims as terrorist bombers now it is it ain't no trope it is a fact because the data bears it out that violence gendered violence goes flows pretty much in a clear direction where men are the perpetrators and women are the victims some men and, and uh, Some men. Yes, I never, I've never said all men. No, I know that. But I, I, the other thing I think we need to be careful of yeah. with this is I'm, I try and be really careful on this program sure. to Let's use to use words like some because at the moment what i'm worried about i've got calls coming in on my board at the moment as a response to what jenny jones said earlier as a mm. response to actually some of this conversation saying here that that you know this is making out that all men we all do nothing and we happily allow i've got i've got a tweet here from uh, someone saying um uh, you know it's being made out by this woman sorry to use that term okay, lady i, I would like to do um uh, do nothing and allow women to be beaten by other men if it wasn't for good men this society would be a lot damn worse um uh, 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 and i guess that is the danger with some of these conversations is that that it it leads to a perception that men are being negatively generalized when there is an expectation that they should have to call out this stuff. I'm not saying they shouldn't. It's I think about the expectation. What would you respond to those people who are texting in at the moment saying, look, this is making out that all men are tarred with the same brush here? I mean, stop making it about you. Stop taking it so personally, because actually you should be appalled and disgusted and outraged that 97% of young women have experienced sexual harassment. You know, I personally have been groped, catcalled at, chased. But that's not down to all no, men. All no, it isn't. It isn't. But the perpetrators have always been men. And that should appall you. That should disgust you. And you shouldn't make it about you. If you're, a, if you're a good guy, show me your good guy credentials by standing up for women who are on the, receive, the receiving end of this kind of abuse. Use your power in a way that actually makes life better for um, the women and girls in this society who don't deserve to have to live um, under the threat of violence day in, day out, under the threat of abuse, under the threat of being harassed and tormented and potentially murdered. Okay, so what can good men 
do. I know I realize what you're saying about don't make it about them. Yeah. I, I ask that people make the point that it's 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 some men that are bad, as you have yeah. respectfully done. But what can good men do? What can we do? I mean, we've covered some of it already, even though we ended up having a long discussion about whether it is hypocritical or not. Absolutely call it out, always. Never let it go. Never let um, sexist jokes by, you know, go unanswered. Never let a woman uh, be um, catcalled in your company. Call out the men who, who do that and, and, and who do that to sort of boost but, their but, own but, macho but, credentials. What, what can we do Step if one. we don't see it? though because i think that's a yeah. what can we do if we're not a present for it what can we do in response to actually this story because most men so, i know yeah. are utterly yeah. appalled about this story and, and they're frustrated that they can't do anything i think that they are and i know you won't like this but i think they are a bit frustrated that there's a conversation that seems to center around men in general yeah. rather than bad men and i guess i will okay. also make this point and and, yeah. and and you come back to me with all of this sure and you might not like it, but I've had lots of conversations on this show about how, uh, and I'm not making it all about men because a, a woman has potentially lost her life. She has disappeared. I acknowledge fully that mm. violence against women is happening at the hands of some awful men. But I also think there's a wider problem in society at the moment about what men in 2021 are supposed to do, what they are supposed to B, are women supposed to be independent? Are they supposed to be protected? Are men supposed to show polite and good manners by opening the door? Are they supposed to not? Are they allowed to approach a woman? Are they not? And I, I talk to a lot of young men, and let's not forget, if we're talking about the, 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 the lives of women ending, suicide is the biggest killer of, of men that you will find in this country. Yes. And I think that there is also dare I say in this climate, a crisis among men about what on earth they are supposed to do, what they are supposed to be, how they are supposed to act, whether they're supposed to be masculine, macho, soft, gentle, feelings, all of those sorts of things. And I'm sure that's something you're conscious of as well. Of course I'm conscious of that. But, you know, I'm here to talk about the way women suffer violence at the hands of men. You know, it is so prevalent every year 1.6 million women are victims of domestic abuse so we're not safe on the streets and we're not safe in our homes necessarily either so if you got 1.6 million women who are victims you've got at least 1.6 million men who are perpetrated it's not some tiny little group and i think what i want to see um all men do the good men who you've described feeling confused about what to do and the crisis of masculinity i want them to say enough is enough i want them to join their voices with ours i want them to be calling for ending violence against women and girls to be a political and policing priority we need investment to go into that to eradicate it why is it okay why would we accept a situation where pretty much every single woman just has to um deal with the fact that she'll probably be harassed on the street Men should be as angry as I am. Men should be demanding that, you know, that the men who perpetrate this change their behavior. We should have the highest standards in our criminal justice system, and men should be calling for that too. They should be demanding that from politicians, demanding that from police leaders. It should be something that, you know, is as, that they care as passionately about as I do. Why wouldn't they? It's, it's, it's no good saying, well, I do think it's a bit of a shame and then going about your business. How do we ever change things if people turn a blind eye and say they've got an excuse for turning a blind eye because they're confused about their masculinity? It's not my fault that a man is confused about his masculinity. I know, you know I, I wasn't. I and, wasn't that's not, I, and that's not an excuse. No, and I wasn't saying action. that people turn a blind eye because they're confused about their masculinity. I just think it's a fair point to say that yeah. when it comes to the role of men in society in 2021, I yeah. think that there is a crisis going on. And I think the suicide statistics show that. Now, that is not to take away in any way, shape or form from the point you've made about violence against women. I just think I, I, I think, think it comes down to men not knowing how to how to react, basically. But listen, I know you've I got to this... go and do another interview. But if you've got time to answer, please. I think, I think that one of the factors that influences high male suicide rates is misogyny, patriarchy, the male supremacist world that we live in, which demands men be macho. 
which actually plays on these stereotypes that are really damaging. And so men who might have different sensibilities don't feel they can live up to those expectations, have a crisis, and it, it puts them under, under pressure and emotional strain and mental health strain. Let's all join hands and fight uh, patriarchy and male supremacy so we can all be ourselves, so we can all fulfill our poten potential in all the ways it's possible to fulfill our potential.